Blessings and namaste, everyone. I'm spiritualist, psychic astrologer, and medium Ray Seti. Thank you once again for offering me this opportunity to share with you my astrological and spiritual insights for the month of May 2019. We do have a common thread that is moving through this month, and we have the sun transiting the sign of Taurus. Taurus most represents wealth, our creature comforts, uh, our income, that, that which we create monetarily as well as materialistically. And so many of us, many times, we struggle in bring to form these elements that we truly, truly desire. So I suggest at the time of the balsamic moon, which is on April 30th, and the exact time is 9.17 p.m., allow yourself to recognize where perhaps a lack mentality, a poverty mindset may be present that certainly pushes away all that we desire to bring to form. We have to be very aware of the programs and the condition of lack in our lives. Sometimes we miscreate abundance in the element of lack. So I certainly suggest to just reflect and review on these possibilities and use the time of the balsamic moon as, the, as an opportunity to really prepare for what's coming with the, the new moon, which is in the sign of Taurus. And that will be on uh, May 4th at 6.45 p.m. Uh, just to quickly reiterate, as I said, at the time of the balsamic moon, allow yourself to be mindful to release the, the mindset of, of lack, a poverty mindset, mindset, excuse me, if there are any mis, uh, misrepresentations, misconnotations in your mind about having money. You know, many times we hear that money is the root of all evil. That's, 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 a, uh, that's a misnomer. That's not necessarily accurate and correct. Money in and of itself really has whatever whatever elements, whatever conditions we're placing upon it. Also, remember that money is referred to as currency. Money contains a vibration. Allow yourself to recognize your vibrational connections with having money, abundance, wealth, and all the blessings that we are all very much deserving while we are in human form. It's when we need these things, when we are defined by whether or not we have certain elements in our lives, that's when it doesn't necessarily serve a purpose. Many times when we detach ourselves from the need of any element, it actually allows spirit, the universe, to much more effortlessly bring us all that it is that we desire. So let yourself be aware of any imbalances, incongruencies with what it is that you desire and the allowing it to come to you. And if there are any elements which do not really favor you creating what you desire. Let yourself release them, lovingly release them at the time of the balsamic moon so that you can adequately prepare to really begin a new cycle of blessings at the time of the new moon. As I said, the new moon is on May 4th and the exact time of the new moon is 6.45 p.m. It is in the sign of Taurus. It's actually at 14 degrees of Taurus. Now, the midpoint of any sign is 15 degrees because any sign uh, is, is, is measured in 30 degrees. The midpoint is a very prominent uh, point um, for an astrological sign where many of the elements can be very, very strong. Uh, and I always use the analogy, whenever an arc bridge is constructed, the center point at the very top of the bridge, that has to be the strongest point because when that point is weak, it doesn't allow the support to really be maintained of the entire that entire bridge. That midpoint is very prominent in terms of strengthening, strengthening, solidifying the elements of a spe excuse me, specific astrological sign. And being in the sign of Taurus, Taurus connects, as I said, with wealth, all things monetary, our creature comforts, our income, um, the source of income. So at this new moon, which is on, as I said, on May 4th, allow yourself to really to lovingly 
set in motion all the intentions that you desire in creating wealth, uh, abundance. Uh, be very aware of where you're creating the abundance. As I said earlier, be very aware of not uh, miscreating lack or rather the abundance of lack as well. Pluto is also very much a factor in, in, in this chart. Now, Pluto connects us with our ability actually to manifest at a great form. Uh, Pluto is the element of creation as well as destruction, transformation. Many times when someone has a prominent Pluto element in their chart, they do contain the ability uh, to manifest great prominent elements in the physical world. As I said, we don't want to concentrate too much on having the need to, to, to be surrounded with so many materialistic things that we really lose sight of, of the blessings that are really contained in all of these wonderful things that we all very much deserve. When we approach all of this from a sense of entitlement, that's also not necessarily serving of a greater purpose. When we know that we are really blessed with abundance while we are in human form from a place of love and humility, I always suggest to encode everything with love and humility, then we just once more allow spirit to effortlessly bring us all that we desire. We also have to allow it to come to us. As I was saying earlier, sometimes we don't allow the blessings to really come back to us that we set in motion. I also suggest to recognize how when we look to the outer world, there, there is abundance in all things. There's abundance in trees, in the drops of water, in blades of grass. Abundance is very much part of all our human experiences. It's when we don't feel that we are deserving of the, of the abundance that sometimes we push it away. In a prior video I referred to, I touched upon the passage of Uranus through the sign of Taurus. Uranus requires about seven years to transit, to passage through a sign. And one of the many things that Uranus brings to us through the passage of the sign of, of Taurus is really for us to awaken, because Uranus awakens. Uranus is the planet of awareness. This passage of Uranus through the sign that connects with wealth, wealth, excuse me, and all things monetary, is, is, is lovingly awakening us to the knowing and the understanding that all these wonderful things are very much to be part of our lives. You see, um, also as Uranus transits through the sign of Taurus, the monetary system uh, in the United States as well as throughout the world will be very much dramatically changing because Uranus is the, is the element of dramatic change, which leads to higher awareness. We have to be very mindful to not allow ourselves to be fearful of change that could also push away some of these blessings that are very much being shared with us, giving to us. We're very much becoming aware of these wonderful blessings in our lives during these these unprecedented times that we are very much experiencing right now. Um, as I said, uh, there's uh, we have the Pluto factor in this chart as well. Pluto is the element of manifestation. Pluto is also represented with manifestation, but from that place of divinity. When Pluto it transits the sign of Leo, which that, that took place um, in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. I don't remember exactly when, but it was around that time. The Pluto in Leo generation has a very prominent, the prominent element and the ability, rather, to manifest and bring things to form. But that does not mean that if we're not born during that time, we don't contain this ability as well. Every one of us has that element of creative divinity, which allows us to manifest all that we uh, desire. What I suggest to recognize is, and I've, as I've always said, that all, all astrological alignments, uh, planet signs, contain opportunity for us. And when there is a certain element that is very prominent whether it's in a full moon chart, a new moon chart, or just by transit in our own charts, 
allowing us to really recognize how we have the ability to tap into that energy and really harness that energy to bring to form all that it is that we desire. All of these elements are always very much at our fingertips. Um, and what I continue emphasizing right now is at this time of the new moon, allowing yourself to really have the recognition within yourselves that every one of us has the ability to bring to form, to create, to manifest all that we desire, and how every one of us is very much becoming the master of our destiny, especially uh, during these times. There's a very nice alignment from Neptune to the new moon. Uh, Neptune as a transit, the sign of Pisces. It's assisting us in our awareness of the presence of spirit and how spirit is very much available for us to assist us while we are in human form. We only have to ask. You know, spirit, as I've, as I've mentioned before, spirit cannot interfere with our free will. We have to allow spirit to work with us, but also too, spirit cannot do the work for us. It is available for us. It is available to assist us, but it can't do something for us, if you will. Uh, we have to be very aware that spirit is giving us the opportunity to really demonstrate our creative ability ourselves. It will assist us. It will support us. It will not conduct what is necessary to bring to, to creation whatever it is that we desire. So we have to be the ones, we are the ones who, who are uh, given opportunities to set the intentions in motion and follow through with bringing to form those intentions. But what I'm emphasizing here is once again, be aware and ask Spirit for its assistance on your spiritual journey to really create and bring to form all it is that you would desire to experience. Uh, remember also, too, the allowing. We have to very much allow spirit to, to, to work with us, but also to, to allow us to really receive the return on our investments. Now, as we approach our full moon, which is on May 18th, and the exact time of the full moon, on May 18th is 5 12 p.m. Now what I'm emphasizing that is taking place or rather that I'd like to touch upon that is taking place earlier in the day on May 18th at 12 16 p.m. we have a prominent alignment between Venus as it transits through the sign of Taurus and Uranus as it transits through the sign of Taurus. About once a year, depending upon if Venus is retrograde or great or not, uh, Venus will form a conjunction, which is a new moon alignment with one of the outer planets as well as any as some of the other elements. Uh, but on May 18th, at, as I said, at 12.16 p.m., Venus conjoins with Uranus and begins a new cycle of experience. Whenever two elements come together, it's the beginning of a new cycle of experience. Now Venus, the planet of beauty, uh, Venus is the ruler of the sign Taurus. We have two prominent opportunities on May 18th. The Venus-Uranus conjunction at 12.16 p.m. and the full moon at 5.12 p.m. Once again, to recognize our creative divinity, our ability to manifest and bring all that we desire to form uh, with the presence of Venus and Uranus. Venus is the element of beauty, the element of all wonderful things in life. Uh, Venus also connects with, with nature because it is the ruler of of, of, excuse me, of Libra, which once again we're at, given an opportunity to observe and recognize abundance in all things. Just, just like when an individual chooses to experience a love relationship within themselves, also Venus being the planet of love, we are awakening to higher vibrational frequencies of love, which 
does offer us an opportunity to enjoy spiritual love. That spiritual love element transcends the physical world. It also transcends anything that, rather, excuse me, transcends the, the experience of needing to have love in our lives. When we observe love in all things, and all things from a place of love, it transcends that need. And once again, it allows us to just effortlessly receive blessings. I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent here, so just kind of bear with me. Sometimes there's a lot of information that Spirit is sharing with me. Um, I do I, I do jot down some notes, but as I'm speaking, I'm being given additional information, and I'm, I'm, I'm always um, very mindful to share with you all that I'm being given in, in ways that you can certainly... Uh, receive with clarity. So just kind of like bear with me here. I didn't mean to go off on a tangent there. Uh, but as I was emphasizing, Venus and Uranus coming together, again, another opportunity to really awaken to all the blessings that are very much being given to us and shared with us from spirit. Now, our full moon, which again, May 18th, 5, 12 p.m., it's in the sign of Scorpio. Now, Scorpio is the is the polar opposite of Taurus. That actually allows us to receive. Scorpio represents the return on our investments. So this is yet another opportunity at the full moon to really recognize how we are bringing to form all it is that we desire. Pluto, excuse me, uh, Pluto is the ruler of Scorpio. Again, we have this common thread here of fully lovingly recognizing our ability to bring all that we desire to form in the, in the exact same way which the source which created all things, which whatever that might be for you, whatever element resonates with you, uh, whether it be God, Buddha, Jesus, there's no right or wrong where this is concerned. We like to refer to it as the source which created all things. The, that element is very much encoded in every one of us. So just as that source, that, that ent entity element of divinity created all that we experience, all of creation, we have the same ability to do just that. Rather, we have the same ability to be just that. At the time of the full moon, allow yourself to come to this recognition from a place of love and humility. We always emphasize and encode the, the constituents of love and humility in all that we are creating, in all that we are bringing to form, we, we suggest to stay away from creating anything from a place of ego and greed, because then that does, that does not necessarily serve a greater purpose. Also, as you're allowing yourself to receive all the blessings that you are creating, also allow yourself to share those blessings with others. We always freely share the blessings that we are creating and are being given to us freely from a place of love because we know that source is infinite. It is constantly, continually replenishing itself. That's the flow of life. That is very much the flow of nature and it's something that we are always very much a part of. The moon being in the sign of Scorpio, the full moon being in the sign of Scorpio, it is the sign of great transformation. So, so much within ourselves is being transformed at this time, being released. Much fear is being released actually at this full moon as well. Uh, so, the sign Scorpio does connect with the element of fear. A full moon is a time of release, culmination. If we are observing much fear, once again, coming to the surface in the outside world, it's only an indication that is that it is being released. Many times we are given opportunities to release certain elements, conditions with ourselves. They come to the surface and quite often we misinterpret the experience where we're focusing, concentrating too much on what is being released that we inadvertently reinforce it instead of being released. 
If you find yourself having an experience where something is coming to the surface, something is bubbling from the unconsciousness, allow yourself to observe it from a distance. Whenever we observe any, any condition from a distance, any experience from a distance, we allow spirit to share with us the higher knowing of a situation. When we are detached from the outcome of any experience, any situation, we allow ourselves to fully recognize and receive the blessings of the experience because we have no preconceived notions. Many times those preconceived notions place conditions that actually limit and restrict spirit from returning us, bringing us, sharing us the return on our investments. At the full moon, allow yourself to really receive the return on many investments that you have set in motion, whether it be monetarily, personal health, peace of mind, or really doesn't matter, whatever is significant for you, allow yourself to receive those blessings. Once again, I'm spiritualist, psychic astrologer, medium, Ray Setti. I thank you for offering me this opportunity to share with you some of the astrological and spiritual possibilities during the month of May. As I've always emphasized, during any time frame, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of alignments that come together. We share and we touch upon whatever is prominent at a given time. Remember, everything is specific and personal to our astrological charts as to how we can benefit from them. And, and we, we always allow ourselves to just be open, receptive to all these wonderful, wonderful possibilities. I am continuing my time at the Mystical Moon through May 8th. Uh, we do have some session times open and available. You just need to contact the centers uh, directly to schedule your time with, with me. I always look forward to these most wonderful, blessed experiences and opportunities. Some of us have been meeting for many, many years, and it's truly a blessing for myself to be able to share with you all of this through, a long, through and over a, a, an extended period of time. And I always welcome those who we have not yet met. So once again, I thank you for this opportunity. Stay in the light always in a place of love, and I will see you all very, very soon. Namaste.